So as promised, I want to speak for a second to the evangelicals who have spent the past few years, um, and especially the past few months leading up to the election, either explicitly or implicitly condemning a vote for Donald Trump as a vote for hate and hailing a vote for Joe Biden as a vote for love and decency and respect and dignity and normalcy and moderation and all of that. These are our Christians who say that they care very much about obeying God, both publicly and privately. Uh, many of them claim to even care about religious liberty, and yet they outright insisted or, or at least just implied that voting for Trump was worse than anything that Biden and Democrats could ever do, could ever usher in. There are organizations who claim to be bipartisan, who say that they care about religious freedom and protections for LGBTQ people, who are only now sounding the alarms on what the Equality Act actually means when they had ample opportunity to do so ahead of time. Uh, these are Christians saying that this is the greatest legislative threat to religious liberty that we've seen. And to them, I just have one question. Where have you been? We have been saying this about this bill for years now. We have raised the flags about this for a very long time. We tried to warn people that if you vote for Democrats, this is just one thing that you will be getting. They haven't tried to hide this. We tried to tell people, look, Biden isn't keeping a secret about who he is. He is not a moderate. He is for taxpayer-funded abortion through nine months. He is against religious liberty. He is against school choice for predominantly poor students. He is for men having access to women's spaces. He is for haphazard immigration policy. He is for the toxic lie that is critical race theory pervading government agencies and the military. And a lot of you just rolled your eyes and said, yeah, but Trump, Look at what Trump said. Look at look at this headline. Look at how bad he is. Anyone who votes for him is a racist, and that's the worst thing that you could do. Voting for Joe Biden, we were told, is a vote for kindness and for love. That's what a lot of you said. And I agree. Trump has some very serious flaws and failures, obviously. But I do not want to hear your concerns about this legislation that you basically have had nothing to say about for the year leading up to the election that Joe Biden said that he supported. If you were really concerned about it, you should have talked about it just as much as you talked about how mean Trump was. The, the truth is, the fact of the matter is, the evangelicals for Biden crowd decided not to heavily highlight the things like the Equality Act or Biden's pro-abortion agenda before the general election or before the Georgia special election, because at the end of the day, they still wanted people to vote Democrat. They decided that getting the, the mean orange man out of the White House was more important than conscience protections for doctors who don't want to perform abortions on a kicking, moving, feeling, unborn baby, or who don't want to surgically castrate a teenage boy who now identifies as a girl. They decided that beating Trump was more important than ensuring girls could go to the bathroom or change in the locker room or compete in sports with only girls. They decided it was more important than ensuring that women in prisons or or in abuse shelters would be protected in women only spaces. They decided that making sure Trump lost was more important than ensuring taxpayers aren't forced to fund abortions. And it, in, in exchange for what? Like, what did they get for their vote for Biden? They got a guy who has said and continues to say as many allegedly racist things as Trump has who said that poor kids are just as smart as white kids. He said that he doesn't want his kids to go to school in a so-called racial jungle. He said that he can't even go into a 7-Eleven without hearing a person with an Indian accent. He authored a crime bill which has disproportionately affected black and brown communities and who uh, is now going to do what for so-called racial justice? Support more funding to Planned Parenthood and oppose school choice? What will Biden and Democrats accomplish in this area that Trump did not? You didn't get better facilities at the border. All you got is Washington Post changing their language from, quote, kids in cages, which is what they called the border shelters under Trump, to, quote, influx facilities, which is what they're calling them now. Either way, by the way, they were built by the Obama administration, I will note, which should tell you how utterly affected so many people were by the media hatred of Trump and the glossing over of Biden, including the Christians who voted for Biden, who thought that they were making a good exchange. One day, 
the long tentacles of the Equality Act and progressive totalitarianism will come for your church. It will come for your pastor. It will, it will come for your kid's school. It will come for your daughter's sports team. It will come for your local women's shelter, your florist, the pro-life pregnancy center that you sponsor, your business, your speech, your beliefs. And I do wonder if then you will realize that your vote in the name of supposed decency was not worth it, that you linked arms with people who hate you and everything that you believe in. I have many qualms with the Republican Party, but understand, Christian, that the Democratic Party hates you. And they dupe so many people every few years into thinking that they care about religious people's rights and beliefs and that they are the party of compassion. And the fact that they can convince people of that, even while openly celebrating abortion and gender confusion in kids and having absolutely nothing to show in the way of compassion is honestly so remarkable. They're amazing at PR and advertising, marketing, messaging. And look, I believe that if you voted Democrat, uh, you did so because you thought it was the best thing to do. I don't think that you're some bad person. I, I certainly don't hate you. I don't think that you're stupid or anything close to that. I just think that you were wrong, that you were very wrong. And I just want to be candid and saying that it's hard for me to hear and see some of you complaining about this legislation and policies and nominees that so many people warned you about for months on end. And I'm not saying that Trump was the perfect candidate or that you had to have voted for him to be on the right side. I think faithful people decided to vote for neither candidate. But even so, you could have at least expressed some concern over Biden's radicalism before the election. But you didn't because, again, at the end of the day, you felt that defeating Trump was more important than protecting taxpayers from funding abortions or Christian doctors from being forced to perform sex change surgery. And I simply believe from my perspective, that you made a bad trade. And maybe you're realizing that. And if that's the case, I'm not angry. I'm not shunning you. I'm not canceling you. I'm not in any way gloating, certainly not, because I'm not happy about it. But as the saying goes, elections have consequences. And now we are going to continue to live with these. But it's not too late to speak up. It's not too late to push back. And I would argue as a Christian who cares about these future generations, who cares about these vulnerable populations, that it is your obligation to do so.